I'll be doing a lot of reviewing this year, going over some things uh, before I start on the series. I want to open, open up with this kind of picture in a certain spirit of uh, gladness. In the 1990s, Bobby, Bobby McFarlane, is his name, uh, wrote a song. He had no musical instrument using only his voice. As a matter of fact, I was in the cloth at that time in Atlanta. Um, it, 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 it was a hit. It was just his voice. And he used some voiceover. And he, the title of it was Don't Worry, Be Happy. And it came, you know, sometimes it's something can come, a word can come in the right season. And it can come at another time and it has no significance, don't mean anything in particular. But at the right time, something can come and you can hear it. And it makes a powerful impact. It, it just speaks to, uh, to you in a certain season. And this was just a basic song, but it came at the right time. And it spoke volumes. And so I pulled from that um, uh, that talk, song title for the day's message. Uh, touch your mind and say, "Don't worry." Don't worry. Don't worry. Be happy. Be happy. Be happy. Be happy. Amen. Don't talk to them. Ain't no, no, no trick. Ain't no trick about this. Don't speak to them. Tell them, "Don't, don't worry." Don't worry. Be happy. Be happy. You'll get out of life what you put in. One more time. I'm going to say, don't worry. Don't worry. Be happy. Because yeah. if worry could pay your bills, then I would advise you to worry plenty. Worry much. Since it doesn't pay anything, I'll show you about it. They don't need it. You don't need to waste your time on something that is not going to produce benefits and food in your life. Amen. Be happy. Happy, happy. Be happy. Be happy. Be happy. Now you might say, I, I, I don't know if I got a lot to be happy about. Well, we can show you a lot of people who would love to be in your shape. Amen. God can fix it where, well, I hate to use that terminology in a way, but, I, but he can fix it to where, you know, you, you, you can be in a, a position that you wish you was in today. But we, we don't hope that on anybody. So uh, don't worry. Don't worry. Proverbs 17, Solomon writes this. A merry heart does good like a medicine. Mm -hmm. You see that right there? Mm -hmm. A merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bone. Mm -hmm. There's another translation that says, a broken spirit brings desolation, brings depression, brings Anxiety, which I show all of that, it, 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 it actually is counterproductive. It works against your health. A broken spirit. There's nothing wrong with we'll go through times and seasons in our lives with different things and hurts and grief and all of that. But even the Bible says, don't sorrow as those who have no hope. Because, you know, we, you know, we have hope. We have a great God who's with us. So he says, he goes on to say in another translation that a broken spirit actually is counterproductive. It works against your health. But a merry heart promotes healing. Yeah. Like Isn't yeah. that something that, that, that your, your, your state of mind has a lot to do with your physical health? Oh, wow. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I'm going to say that again. Your state of mind has a lot to do with your physical health. And this is what Solomon is getting at, that, that a merry heart 
So your first medicine you ought to take every day is to wake up with a spirit of thanksgiving and cheer that, well, I'm glad to be on the land of the living. Thank God I'm in my right mind. You know, I don't care if it's stolen and, and everything else outside. Well, you thank God that you're not in the rain. I'm in shelter. I got, you know, praise God. I can look out my window and see the gloom and doom. They got a lot of folks under, you know, under, hey, under the bridge everywhere else. And some of them just underneath the light. You know, so, so, you know, if you can't find nothing to be happy about every day, then that, that is already the beginning of a problem that, that, that you know, I guess you're going to have to see if I get fixed. You know. But he says, uh, 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 a merry heart does good like a medicine. The, in the Adam Clark comment, uh, commentary concerning that, he says this concerning that, that statement, that verse of scripture. Nothing ruins health. This is a, this is a translation, interpretation rather of, of, of that, you know. Nothing ruins health and waste life as grief, anxiety, and of course, you, you know, all of that. But happiness invigorates the powers of the soul. Amen. Happiness invigorates the powers of the soul. It turns on something in the soul of man. Happiness. And not something in the soul. And nothing will waste life in your health. Like he said, we now understand everything is in context. I don't have to go through all of this over and over again. So I know we, we grieve for the loss of loved ones. We grieve in other things like this. And, and again, all of those decisions that we go through, that's not what he's talking about here. And I hopefully to paint that, bear that out. You know, he's not talking about, you know, that, that you, you don't go through times and seasons of these things. But he's describing a condition of your spirit, your mental makeup, and so forth and so on. So nothing ruins health. Look, you see what he's you see that? Nothing ruins health. And waste life. It, it's, I know y'all don't like me to say this too much. It's, it's okay. This is really okay. You know, I'm I'm I'll be your, your burden bearer and to, a, to a degree. You can, you can cry on my shoulders to a degree. After a while, you know, I'm not trying to be Jesus on the cross and trying to carry your cross. I'll help you bear your burdens, but I'm not trying to carry your cross. Do what David did. Learn how to encourage yourself. Pick yourself up. Come on, Rev. Everybody got problems. So he says, nothing ruins your health, weighs your life, like, like, like this anxiety and grief. In Proverbs 12, it says this, he uses this word in, in the, in the uh, New King James translation, that anxiety in the heart of man causes depression. But a good word makes it glad, makes your soul glad. I'm trying to give you a good word today. Get happiness in your soul, but anxiety causes depression. Mm -hmm. Hello. Mm -hmm. So, Lucretius wrote it this way. He says, sorrow in the soul, which he's also given the, de this is the definition of misery, is like a disease. Good God. Wow. It eats away life. A sorrowful soul, that's, 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 that's when you get to a place of hopelessness, mm -hmm. it's like a disease. It eats away life. He also called this a work of sorrow of the soul, a worker of death. It only brings death. But this is his definition of misery as well. Sorrow in the soul is it's like a disease. It, it eats away your life. In Deuteronomy, it, it, go, it, it reverses it and says, so you shall rejoice. In every good thing, 
Come on, say rejoice. Rejoice. In every good thing which the Lord your God has given to you and your house, rejoice in every good thing that the Lord has given Oh, Lord, I told you, we're not going to this year, we're going to be talking so much about the devil, the devil, the devil. Amen. I'm tired of that too. You know, that's the excuse and it's Come on now. So anyway, he says, rejoice in every good thing. Which the Lord your God has given you and your house. You, oh, oh. That's, I don't feel so well. Your children not in jail. Rejoice in something, the good things that's yes, going on Lord. in your house. Yes, Thank you, man. Yes. Yes. you don't know how you woke up this morning. Yes. Rejoice yes. in the good thing. Yes, yes. I always tell the say, I say this a lot and I do. Perspective is everything. Yes. How you view stuff in life. Yes. So rejoice. In every good thing in your house. I got a leak in my room. Okay, your life are still working. My car is old. It's running, baby. It's getting you to point A to point B. The same as anybody in 2019. But I need a new one. You're not in debt. <laughs> See, that's all I'm doing is taking something that you can relate to. Yes. He says, rejoice in every good thing that the Lord gives you and in your house. And okay, there's always something to cry about. There's always something to shout about. He says we rejoice. And notice he used the word rejoice, and I'll deal with that in just a moment. So this is how Solomon brings it all home in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. He says, I know that nothing is better for me than to rejoice. Now, I, let, me, let, me, let me clarify what he said. I'm not talking about when he says rejoice. I, I keep using the word because I want to make a, I'm going to cut a fine line. I'm not talking about here going out here just party, hearty, you know, crazy, wasting your life and money. That, that's, that's not what he's talking about. You know, because we can say there's a poor person, you don't have a part. That's not, no, no, you, you're too old to even think like that. Anybody in your teenagers. So you know, that's not what he's talking about. He didn't come out here going, just party until you can't stand up. You ain't 20 years old. Come on now. You know, so don't, don't, don't take that out of context and say, but pastor say have a good time. <laughs> he uses the word rejoice. And, I, and that's why I use that because that's not what he's talking about, about party, party till you can't, you know, party till you can't stand and drop and all of that. Like 1999, Prince said, but that was, that was way back ago. So we're in we 2019 now, so I'm 20 years on that side of that statement. So, so this is not talking about a crazy wastefulness of life and parting frivolously and all of those kind of things. It's, it's really a condition of the spirit because he keeps using the word rejoice. It's happening, and that's different from just, you know, that, that attitude about, you know, partying and so forth. So he says, I know nothing is better for me than to rejoice. And that, that also is to, to be happy and cheerful and so on, and to do good in their lives, mm -hmm. and also that every man should eat and drink, and another place says be merry, and enjoy the good of all of his labor. Yes. Why? And, and all of this is the gift of God. Yes. Even happiness and joy, this is a gift of God. Yes. 